would like to be able to match that up to the washer, meaning you want to be able to pull a full load out of the washer and transfer that directly to the dryer. One thing that drives me insanely crazy about our industry is that we never started sizing. If I bought a 50 pound washer, then I should need a 50 pound dryer. That would make sense. Nope. We say 50 pound washer and a 75 pound dryer. And uh, so it's kind of based on volume of how many pounds an hour you can dry versus how many pounds of wash you can wash. Um, but that's typically the math we use is take the size of the washer, multiply it by 1.5, and it should get you pretty close to what size dryer you need. Now, we've had customers that, hey, I want to split it because whatever reason we split the load. But that gets a little hard to make sure that it gets balanced properly and, you know, overloading one and underloading the other. So it's, it's not that hard to, to determine that, you know, what size dryer you need, but it, I think it's important that you try to keep one for one. We have, we, we usually have been very successful in talking them out of it. And the reason being is as a dryer that is severely underloaded, we don't get the benefit of drying any faster. We, in fact, all that heat and that air is just gonna blow through the dryer and not through the clothes and just escapes out. So all you're doing is you're not magically changing the formula of BTU input for pound of water remove uh, because you got a bigger dryer. In fact, we're gonna use, you're gonna be the opposite. You're gonna be using more BTUs and more, you know, to, to remove the same amount of water because again, you wanna force that air through those linens and get it get it to evaporate so it, it it doesn't buy you anything you're not getting any faster uh, you're going to use a lot more energy and you're going to spend a lot more money now if you really want it i'm happy to sell it to you but <laughs> we wouldn't recommend it